Hi, Dustin Adam, current board president of Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce and financial advisor with Edward Jones and Fleetwood, here to talk to you a little bit about some of the very exciting events to come in 2018 for the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. Really excited about a lot of the events that the Northeast Berks Chamber has hosted throughout the course of 2018, including our first ever Chamber Dinner. But I think one of the things I'm most excited about as my time as president comes to a close is uh, an, an initiative we're going to start in September to celebrate our 30th anniversary as uh, Chamber of Commerce. Northeast Berks Chamber, of course, started in 1989 as the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce. We have evolved and over the last 11 years have operated as the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. Over the last couple of years, the Chamber has expanded what it offers to local communities. And of course, our name change has come because originally the Chamber did service the Kutztown area, but we've expanded our reach to all of Northeast Berks. Um, a lot of programs to come this year, not going to spoil any of the details, but we are going to hear from some of our founding members uh, the time to come here, talk a little bit about their experience starting the Chamber and how far it's come. As part of commemorating the 30th anniversary of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, originally formed as the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce, today we are revisiting the original headquarters of the Regional Chamber. Participating in our conversation today are Bob Hobaugh. My name is Bob Hobaugh. I uh, served as an initial director of the Chamber of Commerce. I was its attorney in the beginning and remain its attorney. Carl Ziegler. My name is Carl Ziegler. I served as the founding president of the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce. And Paul Lilienthal. My name is Paul Lilienthal. I served as the first executive director of the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce. Right now we're sitting in the club room of the Kutztown Tavern at 272 West Main Street in downtown Kutztown. In fact, as we mentioned, this is the Chamber's original headquarters formerly the Kutztown Antique Gallery. Gentlemen, I'd like you to talk about some of your recollections of your first meetings here at this location, 272 West Main Street. And also, let us know about other people beside yourselves who were instrumental in organizing the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce in 1989. We were really feeling good when we got a lease in our own space. And that was an important thing to have a headquarters in a meeting place. Um, we had board meetings, uh, I guess beginning at the end of 1989, and Carl was our president, and Paul was our executive director. And um, we ran really under the same bylaws that we have today. But I can tell you that our initial meetings were all about getting organized. We set a goal of 100 members in the first year. We constituted committees, and we tried to define our mission. One thing we had going for us was an interest in working with the local municipalities, a tourism and retail committee, and a Fool's Run committee. And uh, the Fool's Run exists, not run by this chamber, but um, it still uh, is held annually. Um, it was a big part of what we did. I would mention that uh, Paul Sarver was the uh, proprietor of the uh, Kutztown Antique Gallery, so we're forever grateful for uh, the opportunity to meet here. I would also note that uh, Bob Hobaugh has been instrumental in terms of making us official or legal, if you will, a uh, 501c3, uh, as he has done with many other charitable organizations. And as Bob said, Paul served as our founding uh, director. Uh, he was instrumental from the very beginning of trying to get a group, a group together and uh, continue to work with the chamber for quite a few years. So we're very appreciative of that. Talk a little bit about the impetus to actually form a local or regional chamber. Um, I believe there was a Kutztown Business Association. And also, what was the involvement of the university in the formation of the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce? The uh, Kutztown Business Association already existed uh, in an attempt to serve the, you might say, the Main Street proprietors in Kutztown. Uh, 
we wanted the uh, to have a much wider scope than just Kutztown Main Street. So we named ourselves the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce and uh, promoted ourselves to the Topton Fleetwood area initially. And then of course, many or not many years later, but later years, uh, tried to reach out from that perspective. Uh, the Kutztown University was instrumental uh, in the creation of the chamber. Uh, they allowed us to participate in their speaker forum, which was extremely well attended, really on the uh, Berks County and Lehigh Valley range. Uh, and they allowed us to be a sponsoring member along with Berks County Chamber of Commerce and the Lehigh Valley Group. So it was extremely uh, valuable to us. Related again to the service area, my understanding is that the original service area was identified as the East Penn Valley and today people may not understand what you know constitutes that area. So in addition to some of the towns that you just mentioned like Kutztown, Fleetwood or Topton, that also include parts of the Lehigh Valley, correct? That's correct. We went into uh, Merchtown and, and really anybody that did business uh, within within our regional area. Uh, we just, again, didn't want to limit ourselves to uh, just a small core group of, of uh, business people. Bob mentioned earlier that the in the early months of the Kutztown Area Chamber, you were looking to recruit about 100 members. And in doing some research, reading some newspaper articles from the Reading Eagle, it seems that you, know, you, were, it, you had a really strong chamber even from the first six months where you recruited about 59 members. And I've recently seen a list that was published in 1990 that contained 114 members. So did you find that it was easy to market the new chamber to businesses in, in town and the surrounding areas? And how did you market the chamber to those businesses? Yeah, we had, uh, Paul, you recall that we had uh, uh, Bill Sutton, who was the head of the foundation, and Reno Unger was in publishing up there, and he was also a teacher. Um, the other thing was that we had support, really from the top with Dave McFarland. We were um, beneficiaries of their facilities, their services, and relationships. When Carl was mentioning earlier about the, uh, we called it the uh, uh, Speakers Forum, uh, I mean, in our first year, we co-sponsored an event in which Pierre Salinger was a speaker. And so we were honored and elevated by the university. Um, I, I will say about how we marketed ourselves. Uh, things were different. Uh, it wasn't social media. It wasn't computers. What it was was uh, print and, um, and word of mouth. I will say that we had uh, a big, a big to do about getting a bulk mailing permit. That was important. But the real nuts and bolts of it were the people who were here. Um, the people who stepped up to be a part of this organization were really those you'd want in the networking system. And they saw the need, they came together, and they were satisfied with what was going on. I think a lot of the uh, marketing was really word of mouth. We had uh, as you said, a significant core group of people that uh, were members and we continue to expand. But again, I'll say that each of those members let their uh, compatriots know about the chamber and uh, many times were interested. So we did have, uh, uh, we had set our objectives of the initiative of getting 100 uh, members and then we moved to 150. I can recall that we had at one time uh, seemingly plateaued maybe in, in the 150 to 200 members but uh, so it, it didn't didn't grow as fast uh, as we had initially but that was to be expected. I think it's a testament to what you've done years ago nearly 30 years ago that we still have retained about 25 percent of the original members, given that some people have passed away or retired or moved or closed their businesses. Um, I think that's a substantial retention of a nearly 30 year old organization. When the foot we back to 30, uh, 
involved in there, and as well as the uh, bank across the street. Very true. Okay, so um, here's a, uh, a chamber membership plaque. This is um, the original plaque that we had for our founding members. And I remember that what we did was we ordered initially 100 of these and, um, and gave them to our, our founding members, those people that uh, we know in that first group of about, what, 114 or something? Anyway, um, and these became um, mounted on the wall and then we get a, a new annual uh, renewal. And instead of being a sticker, it was actually a um, physical item that hung. And so uh, people had a, sort of like a chain of, of years hanging down from the original plaque in their walls. And I understand that many people uh, display these things proudly now. And uh, you find them in, in the businesses from some of our original members. So I would also, I, I would speak to the fact that uh, we've already talked about the importance of the university in the formation of the chamber. I would also note that even before we were Chamber of Commerce, uh, when we had just interested business people getting together, uh, many times the uh, uh, university made rooms available. I can recall that the, uh, what is today the uh, alumni house, uh, we met in there somewhat regularly. Uh, a lot of times just to do brainstorming on what should we look like, uh, mm -hmm. how do we go about, uh, or do we want to, and how do we go about forming a chamber of commerce. So it was, uh, uh, they, were, they were participating from day one, uh, previous to the chamber actually incorporated. Before we incorporated, right. We had, in the summer of 1989, those meetings that Carl was talking about, and um, the people here, um, Carl and Paul certainly were there, Patty Snyder, Carl Zinn, um, Dick Carr, the then superintendent of the Kutztown Schools was there, and uh, many other people who remained part of our community. It was a good time. I'd also recall that uh, during those first couple of years, uh, uh, as you said earlier, I served as founding president uh, after I relinquished that uh, post. I did serve on the board, and I recall that we had uh, some board meetings at the, uh, at the end at that time. And it was, uh, I think at that time that I realized that what we had started was established how long it was going to go was another question but uh, we had uh, we had gone through all the uh, efforts of, that were necessary to found an organization to uh, get uh, the management the uh, uh, director and the, the board together and uh, now we had to do our business <laughs> <laughs> And that business was interesting because we had um, we had people um, who were involved in tourism. Um, Kutztown is a, is a big part of tourism in Burbs County, in Pennsylvania. Um, that's now handled by, I think, the Americana. Um, but because we had the Kutztown Folk Festival, the Heyman Fest, and other things at the university, and um, things like the Chili Pepper Festival, and I don't want to miss any shouldn't enumerate a Lions Fiddle Festival. Lions Fiddle Festival, good point, Carl. I mean, uh, this was a part of the greater East Penn Valley economic development. And, um, and we got behind tourism in the initial years. Well, we certainly uh, supported young people with having the uh, awards for the high school kids, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the food run to raise scholarship money. And the Fool's Run today continues under the auspices, I believe, of the uh, uh, JCs or the Optimist Club. Club. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, they continue to build and uh, uh, probably awarded even more in terms of scholarships to students. Uh, through the years that they've operated and we were able to. So yeah. kudos to them. We were, we were really impressed with the quality of runners who came to Kutztown 
at the time, in 1989, 1990, um, we had people from, from Nigeria come who were excellent runners. Not everybody wore sneakers. In fact, the best runners were not from the United States of America. Amazing. Hi, my name is Jeff Wachter. I am the president of the Road Agency Insurance in Kutztown. And uh, we've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce since the beginning. Uh, the reason we joined was because it's a community based business. Uh, we're always wanting to uh, support any community-based operation. Um, the road agency has been in Kutztown since near as we can tell, 1903. I've uh, been through a number of generations of folks by the name of Road, and uh, my father took over somewhere, we're gonna, I'm gonna say in the mid-70s. And my father was here for at least uh, up until 2005 when I took over. And we've remained supporters of the chamber all along. My name is Matt Petrauskas. I'm a senior director of sales and marketing for Diacon Lutheran Social Ministries. I work in particular for two of our senior living communities, the Lutheran Home at Topton and Luther Crest in Allentown. We're actually taping right now at our Lutheran Home at Topton location. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Diacon Lutheran Social Ministries is a faith-based nonprofit organization. Uh, we own and operate eight retirement communities in Pennsylvania, go down into Hagerstown, Maryland. We also offer adoption services, foster services, youth services, so a lot of services. And in particular, the Lutheran Home at Topton is a full, what you call a continuing care retirement community. So we offer a very vibrant and joyful independent living for people that want to live a worry-free independent lifestyle. We also offer personal care and memory care for those that need a little bit more assistance. And we also operate a five-star rated 194 bed skilled nursing facility. One thing a lot of people don't know about the Lutheran Home at Topton is as part of our skilled nursing facility, uh, we also do operate a really fantastic short-term rehabilitation facility as part of that. So we do a really great job of getting people in from hospitals, rehabilitating them, and then getting them back home, keeping them safe and keeping them out of the hospital. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about our relationship with uh, the Northern Merck's Chamber of Commerce. Um, one of the, the questions I was asked is, what was our impetus for joining the Chamber of Commerce? And Diacon Lutheran Social Ministries' goal and mission has always been to serve as many people as we possibly can. And a few of the ways we do that, one is by doing a lot of community outreach and trying to build a better community around us, and also by partnering with a lot of businesses and organizations that have similar goals to what ours are. And when we were approached by the chamber almost, I guess, 30 years ago, um, we just really felt that the, they had very similar goals in terms of really building a better community and really gathering a network of businesses together that can really help each other, not only the businesses grow, but the community in the general area grow. And we've really experienced that through the past 30 years. It was a very beneficial for us to join the chamber um, a number of the benefits that we get out of it are, one, obviously we get a listing and that really helps get our name recognition out there. Um, also, we've been able to connect with a number of businesses in the area that we probably would not have been able to connect with had it not been for the Chamber. Going out, networking at Chamber events, um, helping volunteer at Chamber events, and just really creating those relationships. Um, it's, it's really been a great relationship over the past 30 years. One of the reasons we continue to keep our membership with the Chamber is one, again, they really have the same goals in mind that Diacon does. You know, really to help build a better community um, and really serve people that are out there. We've really experienced that in a number of ways. Um, one example of that is we are very, very fortunate to be able to host some of the Chamber events here at the Lutheran Home at Topton. And last year I was able to experience an award ceremony that the Chamber um, offered, which basically gave awards to 
high school students that were disadvantaged. And it was just absolutely fantastic because not only do we look for partnerships with people that are going to refer business to us, which is obviously great, but also we look to partner with people that really are doing good for the community. And that is just one example of many, many, many of ways that the Chamber really does good for the community. It was really moving. It was great that we were able to host that here at the Lutheran Home at Topton and really experience it for ourselves. Hi, my name is uh, Joseph Brennan. I am the managing agent here for Spots Insurance Group in uh, Hartstown. Um, we've been in business for 25 years, started by Jeffrey Spots, our owner. Um, we have locations in um, Berks and Schuylkill counties. Um, we are growing rapidly. Um, our goal here is to provide a great service to our customers, educate them about um, what the risks are with um, not having certain coverages and in insurance, and um, ultimately protecting their assets. Uh, we did join the Northeast Berks Chamber uh, a year ago, um, and it, it's been great since the day we started. Lori's been awesome introducing us to um, members that have been there for, for years. And uh, one of the biggest benefits of the Chamber is just getting out, out there meeting uh, business owners in the community, networking, um, and, and basically just building those long-term relationships. Hi, my name is Jim Renninger. I'm one of the managers here at Renninger's Antique and Farmers Market in Kutztown. We're one of the uh, original members of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, and it's been a pleasurable past 30 years. Um, some of the things that we do here at the market is we were established in 1955. We sell everything from meats to fresh produce to antiques and collectibles, anything you can think of in between. Uh, some of the events that we have here at Running Ears, um, we've been doing antique and collectible shows since the 70s. Uh, we also do an antique radio show. Um, it's finally grown to the largest one on the East Coast. Uh, this year we put together a thing called Unity in the Community. Um, we're going to try to break a world record uh, water balloon toss. And then what better way to bring people together is to have them participate in a, in a water balloon toss. My father James was one of the uh, founding members and my brother Dexter and I plan on continuing our relationship with the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I'd like to remind everybody that we do have other locations in Adamstown and Mount Dora and Melbourne, Florida. So if you get a chance, stop on by and say hi. Hi, I'm Tiffany Kelly. I'm the branch manager of the Topton M&T Bank. We've been a member of the Chamber since 2017. I'd really like to thank the Chamber for everything they've done. Um, there's breakfasts that we have attended. The networking is great. That's one of the reasons that we joined to meet other small businesses in the community. And um, I'm just really thankful that there's something out there that's small, but large enough to reach the uh, community. Hi, I'm Craig Fuller. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Kutztown Area Historical Society. We're sitting in the Schallenberger Room at the Kutztown Area Historical Society. The Society was one of the original 114 members of the Chamber. Our president at the time was Paul Lilienthal, who was one of the founders of the Chamber. The Kutztown Area Historical Society was founded to celebrate the United States Centennial in 1976. They stayed active, bought this beautiful old Victorian school building in 1979, and we have been restoring, renovating, and preserving it ever since. We have eight rooms filled with artifacts from the Kutztown area. Some are quite famous. Uh, we could show you those, but I really think you should come and see them for yourself. The Chamber has been very supportive and very helpful uh, with the Society's mission. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony several years ago when we redid the outside, the landscaping of the Historical Society in honor of Kutztown's Bicentennial in 2015. Hello, I'm Nick Stolzfus. I'm president of Desco Design and Construction. We're based in Fleetwood, and we're one of the founding members of the Northeast Chamber. Um, one of the neat things about being a, a, a business in this town and, and being a family business, my father started the business in 1976 and ultimately helped uh, with the Chamber in, in 
89. And why, why did he get involved in the chamber? His business was growing at the time. It was a way to connect with the community. Um, the chamber has been always a way to bring businesses together, to connect, to, to share ideas, to, to share um, problems, share um, successes within their business. And that has all, always been instrumental for, for the chamber. And to this day, that's, that's what we use the chamber for. It's really a place where businesses can come together they can congregate, you know, we can share ideas. One of the things about small businesses, which uh, the Chamber has a lot of, is that um, they're either sole proprietors, they're, they're owners, and they don't have a big organization to go to and say, hey, what's going on out there? What are you doing in your business? And that has really been a key part of the Chamber, uh, that, and also the networking aspect. It's, 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 it's nice to network with people outside of your own industry. In our business, we build, we we design and build buildings for people and it has allowed us to connect with people within this community and help them with their projects and ultimately have us help them move their business forward. Um, we are a multifaceted construction company. We do big projects and small projects. Every project is an important. Some of the things that, that make us unique is that we have not only taken great craftspeople and, and can deliver a quality product, but we have the ability to design the project. We have good project managers that can manage the project to keep it on schedule, to keep it keep costs under control. So we're really a company that has brought a sense of professionalism to an industry that really, in, in the end, has has a bad rap for being over budget, overpriced, over our long schedules, and, and we have really worked to to be a a professional player in the construction market. Hello, my name is John Scott. I'm the president of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce and the vice president of community lending for Community First Fund, a proud member of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce. I've been a member of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce since 2008 and I've really enjoyed networking, growing, learning, and doing business in the Northeast Berks area and with all of its members. The last 30 minutes, you've watched a documentary of our founders and members in our service area, including shots of ribbon cuttings, our members' businesses, and general discussions about how the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce, originally founded as the Kutztown Area Chamber of Commerce 30 years ago, has impacted their lives and their businesses. What makes the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce great is its members. All of you, thank you for your investment of time, resources, and your monetary investment to make this chamber the premier resource in the Northeast Berks area. As the president of the board and supervising the committees and the organization, we have set some really strong pillars of our vision. Again, our vision is to be the area's premier local business resource within the communities we serve. Our mission is to be a resource and a voice for the chamber members and those who are not members yet in Northeast Berks area. We want to do that by promoting business and community growth and developing opportunities, supporting stakeholders through services, education, and strategic alliances, and advocate for regional, economic development and cultural growth. Our members currently do that through the many opportunities that we offer and through peer-to-peer -peer business interaction. Thank you for being a member and a supporter of the Northeast Berks Chamber of Commerce.